Uh, I'm gonna tell y'all a little story about how I had to punch on this man when I was in grade for the SCI, cause he uh he came at me sideways, but but the dude had a poop bag. So this was a scary moment for me, and I was just really sitting there, uh, you know, debating whether or not I should do this or not. And I came up with the conclusion that I wasn't going to. But this man forced my hand because he went and grabbed the shank. And a, uh, and a dude to come, you know, jump me with him. And I, I was like, not having that shit, bro. Like, I really wasn't having that shit, bro. Like, all right, now you're gonna jump me though? I was gonna let you live and I wasn't even gonna do nothing to you because I was scared that I was gonna kill you if I hit you, bro. This man had a poop bag on his chest. I'm talking about, he got shot in his chest and he was rolling around with a poop bag on and, uh, he still thought he was a stone cold killer, like he was unstoppable, like like he didn't have a poop bag. And uh, truth of the story is like, like nobody's scared of dude. Like when you got a poop bag, you weigh like 10 pounds. So I don't know if this man was high or what, but uh, yeah, I was going to stroll this man by myself and uh, teach him a lesson, but I wasn't gonna hit him in his body where the poop bag is. I was just gonna straight up knock his ass out. And uh, you know, let him know, man, like you gotta chill the fuck out, bro. Like people will fucking kill you for real with that poop bag, bro. I don't care who you are, like this it ain't gonna happen like that, bro. People ain't just gonna let you live like me, man. People will straight up kick you in that shit bag, bro. Send that poop right back in you. Blow your insides out. People don't care, man. People ain't worried about your life. People feel threatened, man. They go, they're gonna do anything, bro. It's fight or flight. They don't care if you own a uh, poop bag, you know, a colostomy, whatever it's called. Like, dude was my friend at first, and uh, you know, me and him got a little bit close. You know, like I found out his real name, um, found out where he lived, found out who he knows. Uh, you know, things of that nature. I thought this dude was alright, for real. And, um, moral of the story is, like, dude was not alright, bro. Like, he was a straight clown and a coward, for real, at the end of the day. Because, uh, he tried to fight me, uh, because I called his celly out. Which, his celly was, um, like, MS-13. So, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Like, he was involved. Like, this dude was just a white dude, but he was trying to be a Chicano or something, bro. He was rolling with the Chicanos and shit, bro. Um, yeah, like, like, he was just a white boy, uh, but he looked, he looked like Puerto Rican because he got a lot of sunlight and shit, I guess. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, like, this was just an argument between us because I called his celly out over being a thief. When you're a thief in prison, you get your ass split, bro. I don't give a flying hell who you are for real because... Like, people just don't, you know, nobody appreciates somebody stealing in prison, bro. Like, you can't make your own bread. So, like, if someone steals off, you can't just go hustle harder and shit to, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, make more money. Like, there's in-house hustles, but them shits are poop for real. If you ain't got nobody holding a fort down while you're in there, you're basically smoked. Um, yeah, man, I was just trying to bring you all this story because this... <laughs> This is like a crazy moment in my life, bro, really. Like, I'll never forget this. I was just sitting in the cell calling the celly out. And this man starts, oh, you know, wolfing out his neck. Snap. But, you know, the funny part is I wasn't in the mood, bro. So today, I had a different agenda, man. Like, I was snap. Basically, here's what happened, bro. I went to go eat chow. And I come back, and uh, two of my packs of kite were gone, which is a pack of cigarettes, but it's just cigarette tobacco, but it's a more expensive one. They're like 250 a pouch or something like that. But upstate, a bag of kite, like, there's a bunch of fiends that want that shit because two of them joints will get you, uh, you know, a high for the day. Um, I'm sorry, I can't really uh, record this the way I want to, but 
we're going to make it happen because this is what we do over here on this channel, bro. This channel is a little bit different than other people's channels, bro. This this channel is a, is what a real dude, man. Like, I'm not fake, bro. I'm telling the story straight from the fucking pen, bro. Believe it or not, y'all want to listen to these old smokers because they look funny. Niggas with no hair and shit. But if you come to a motherfucking real channel like this, you're going to hear about it. All right, look, so Bull's fucking, uh, his celly gets haircuts for a pack of kite. Which is basically $3. It's two fifty, dollars but I swear it was $3, this man's haircut. Maybe, maybe he wanted two suits or something with it. Because the suit is $0.25 cent out of state where I was at. PA, Philly, Philly State Prison Jail. Um... Yeah, so I, I was, uh, you know, I was making moves, and um, the situation turned real sour, bro, because I had a lot of tobacco and shit. So I kept count on my tobacco. I was like, you know, real on point with what I had because if anything went missing, I wanted to make sure that it was addressed and everybody was called out accordingly. So. I get back from jail, boom, two packs of kite were missing. They, that was the only, you know, two packs that I even had in my locker because every other pack was in a, uh, in a cut in a hiding spot because I'm not new to this shit. I know that your boy, uh, I got real angry, bro, and I just start yelling out of my window because on in Gradyford, there's windows on your door. And, uh... I reach my head out the window and I start calling everybody out. Matter of fact, yeah, I start calling everybody out. I'm snapping, whoever the F did this, come give me the fair one right now. You can keep the tobacco on you and care. I just want to give you the hands, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, Sally next door start chirping because, uh, for some reason, I thought it was him. He was the only one I seen stay back from jail, and I ain't even give a freaking crap today, bro. I just straight up called him out. I said, yo, bro, I know it was you. Come over here and get these hands. I'm finna teach you a lesson. You a sucker for real. Uh, You know, stop being a cat burglar and man up. Take shit. You want something so bad, come get it. Uh, you know, shit like that. And uh, I guess dude got real paranoid, because Colossomy bags start chirping in. Yo, we'll ride out, Baba. I'm like, dude, is this guy for real? He's finna ride out with his mans with a poop bag. So I'm telling my celly, I'm like, bro, I'm I'm kind I'm kind of scared. I ain't gonna lie, cause uh, I think this man is gonna die when I punch on him. Cause I'm like gonna break shit. Like when I'm fighting, I don't care. I just start knocking motherfuckers out. One time I straight up took a CO out by accident. And, uh, my celly's like, well, you know, I don't want nothing to do with it. I'm like, yo, you're cold pussy for real too. How about that? Fuck you, add to that shit. I'm fucking getting you the fuck out of here, fat boy. Fucking big for nothing ass bitch. Oh, man, they're, they're my boys. And this down the third, I'm like, yeah, they were my boys, too. But these clowns just start calling me the out, bro. So at the end of the day, I'm going to fucking do what I got to do because I'm upstate and I'm all fucking, I ain't fucking ruining my image, bro. There's dudes, there's freaking knockout artists rolling around knocking people out for fun just to get the cigarette out their mouth. Like, this ain't the place to joke around and shit, bro. So I'm like, gonna handle my business regardless of what Fat Selly doing, bro. He can, like, smoke his junk. He can hope he smoke all day and, uh, you know, forget that I even exist after this. But, um, yeah, I was ready to go into the death, bro. Like, I didn't even care, but, you know, it, we're sitting there arguing for, like, an hour, and I'm freaking snapping on these dudes, bro. Like, this was a big deal for real, because, uh, like, this is my first fight and uh you know like night play upstate because here's what happened 
these dudes want to start saying they got uh they got a knife they got razors they're gonna cut my face they're gonna cut me open they're gonna do this they're gonna do that and i was like oh all right you want to turn a fist fight into some knife play all right we can we can do that too bro it's on you i don't even care bro i'm, I'm on everything right now because i ain't trying to die to be honest bro i'm, I'm straight up trying to go home to my daughter like keep it a bean but at the end of the day, I'm not letting these dudes come in here and cut me and shit. So I start sharpening my shit up. I had a, uh, I had a street toothbrush. So I sharpened that joint into a point. And I start, I start snapping back again. I'm like, yo, I don't give a fuck. I'll fucking take you both out. I swear to God, come over here with that knife, and I swear to God, I'm going before you make it through the door, I'm gonna freaking straight up uh kick y'all both in the head, break your necks, and blah blah blah. And they're like, oh yeah. Alright, we'll see, we'll see when the doors pop. I'm like, alright, yeah, we will see when the doors pop, bro. Like, watch. I'm not just woofing. This is for real. I'm going to handle this shit. So, yo, I called both of their bluff. It was just me versus two. And, uh, you know, it was like 10 minutes till yard. And I'm sitting there waiting for these dudes to cop please. And, uh, they didn't cop please, man. They stuck to their story. And the doors popped. And I, I was nervous as shit, I ain't gonna lie. My heart was racing, bro. Like, if, if you say your heart ain't gonna be racing when you're about to fight with some knives and shit, you're lying. So I'm like, thinking of a plan to take both of these dudes out. And, uh, you know, I concocted the story, bro. When it, like, when they come walking in, I'm, I'm gonna be ready and I'm just gonna straight up plow the one dude with a kick to his fucking chest pulverize this and send him right back out on the block and then the next dude I was going square up with and take his bitch ass out with another kick to the head cause I, I wasn't playing with these dudes bro I'm trying to knock them the fuck out and then kicks to the head is where you really 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 gonna get knocked out especially when you got boots on and uh I wasn't trying to get cut with the knives that these dudes had and shit. Because mine wasn't a knife. I can't just slap you with the jaw and, and you get mangled. Like, my shit was a poker. Like, I had to really get up in there and stab dude. In his neck because the... The, um, the, the state clothing that you wear is like is like a uh, body armor. And, and, you know, they were wearing the state clothing because they didn't want to get cut or pressed or stabbed up. The only place you can stab people is where their uh, body is exposed, which is only their neck and head. The rest of their body is not exposed. And uh, a toothbrush that's very hard and, and sharp is, is going to go through someone's skin, but it's not going to go through this body armor-like uh, suit that you're wearing because it's a one-piece jumpsuit with a button-up in the middle, like a button-up shirt. And, uh, you know... So, I kicked dude right in his face when he's squaring up. He wasn't ready for it. Boom! Dude ain't even know what to do. This is colostomy bag. He came in first. Now, Puerto Rican dude had three dudes with him. And uh, when I was fighting him... He didn't use his little bitch-ass knife. That thing went flying somewhere. I think he got scared to use it because he knew there was going to be too much blood or something, bro. I, could, I called his bluff. So I'm beating the shit out of Puerto Rican dude. Colossomy bag already had to smoke. He ain't coming back in, bro. He was scared to death after that. I think I've been done knocked his bitch-ass the fuck out. And, uh... This, uh... You know, after the fight, after I mangled both of these dudes, they got three boys that are like MS-13 or some shit just riding out with them and shit. So I'm like... I'm 
I was bugging because I had to go out and use the phone after work. And they were just kept circling me like a swarm of sharks, bro. So I'm like, oh, all right, that's how y'all wanna play? Y'all wanna just keep circling me and shit with all these pokers and shit and look like y'all about to fuck me up again? All right, we'll see. So I stood there and held my ground. Yo, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button.